Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Unbox Live. I'm your host, Rob Gagne. And I'm your other host, Nate Beck. I just had this smirk on my face before we started because I we haven't been in the seat in a while. I know. This is actually really, really fun. I know, I missed here. it. I like, Dude, this is the way I like my Fridays. It's uh, We should start it out. Mm, yeah. That's nice. Oh gosh. I, I, so we <laughs> joked for like months of just being, what was that skit called from SNL? Oh, uh, like, all things considered all or things something cons- like yeah. it was like a spoof on all things considered i think mm, Mary, i like your muffins mm, yeah we should maybe do a holiday you episode have, you have moist muffins like this like uh, just in general <laughs> i mean cigars are about fellowship right yes, everyone, of course. everyone says that blah, blah blah but it really is like i lit this cigar earlier today by myself i was in a meeting yep and it's okay but it's so much more fun to smoke with people so Absolutely. obviously thank you out there for joining us Post some comments up uh, because we're talking all things aging cigars. Aging cigars. What does that even mean? I haven't actually done much in the way of aging cigars because yeah, I don't smoke age. them too yeah, fast. I'm like, hey, Nate. No. And he's like, ah, I already smoked it. No, I it. smoked it. <laughs> I, I get have the you concept. seriously ever – do you have a humidor at home? Yeah, I have several. Yeah. Are there a lot of cigars in there or just like a little bit? I would say they're probably three-quarters full pretty regularly. Okay, so then what is it about, like, you don't have anything where you're like, don't smoke that? Not particularly. And okay. the cigars that I have that have been aged have been done so inadvertently. So they're cigars that I get at trade shows, about them. literally, or they're cigars I don't smoke all the time. Like, sure. they're not top of my list. You know, okay. we all have those few cigars that you're like, oh, there's that Placentia, and I got a few of those. I'll just smoke that one. Right. And some others that I enjoy, but I forget about, they end up either in humidor bags. And I have some that have been in bags for a year and a half. Right. So they are now aged, but I maybe haven't smoked it for a year and a half. So I can't remember what it tasted like. Yeah. So it ends up being almost more inadvertent than anything. Well, we got a comment already. Why are you starting off with an inch uh, used stick? Well, I'm... This is what I was smoking earlier this morning. So, you know, thanks for the comments. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He gave me an extra inch. That's always gracious. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, I personally have cigars that I have aged and like to age. Sure. Do I necessarily know what it does to the flavor? I would say no. I don't. Um, and here, yeah. I, I literally looked this up on the internet. Like, okay, what does aged cigars do? And cigar fish, you know, this great line. Aging cigars um or tobacco gives it a more nuanced softens the rough edges and generally improves the product that is so generic Mm -hmm. so generic like and it's going to it's a i had a law professor that said it depends right so it's like uh hey is this uh against the laws like yeah it depends you know i I think when it's done well especially when you're aging let's say wines or you know higher alcohol stouts or barley wines Often when those products are fresh, they can have some sharper edges to it. Like it can be like an alcoholic beverage can be fairly. Oh, absolutely. Like you feel the alcohol. Right. And if you get a couple years of age on that, that softens all of those edges. So let's say a cigar is really peppery or it has a lot of bold flavors. It can soften some of those. And by softening some of those harsher or more 
uh, assertive flavors, it brings forward and accentuates some of the more subtle notes underneath. I think right. that's what I get out of aging. So, I mean, great question from Tucker here. Um, he says, I've heard that aging cigars in a Tupperdor or humidor bag don't do as much as aging them in a humidor with Spanish cedar. I would say I don't, I don't necessarily know the answer to that, but I do know this. When I crack my humidor and my wood humidor and there's that rush of tobacco, there's that rush of cedar, I start smoking right away. Like I start salivating. And I think obviously the, the, the wood impart some flavor into the cigar sure i also think that cigars are fermenting they also need oxygen to ferment and they need a stable moisture base yep to ferment yep so that wood humidor naturally moves oxygen through sure so it's a better to me it's a better aging vessel than an airtight container an airtight and container is just going to give me a good smoking it's cigar maybe a little more pure or clinical in a, a tupper door or a bit large rubbermaid container and i think most people i know that are aging cigars are doing it in large you know rubbermaid or tupperware containers and what they'll often do is open up you know maybe every six months open up and just reshuffle boxes top right. to bottom side to side that adds oxygen in you close it it's still going to age the cigar it's just doing it in right. a more clinical manner you could also throw up the question of like, do you age them in the actual cigar box? I mean, that's right. another big, you know, that's a Cuban thing. That's also a big, like even Pete Johnson from Tatuaje, that's like a huge thing. He's like, I picked this cedar for a reason or this wood type for a reason, put it in the box, just keep my cigars in the box. Yeah. Except for if you have that Dracula with the painted in interior box, don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One exception. Anyways, we need to bring in our guest. His name is Eric. He's with Oak Glen Tobacconist, and he started a cigar subscription called Oak Glen Tobacconist, or OGT, Cigar Society. And here we are going to learn what that gives you in order to try to age cigars. Eric, thanks for joining us. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me on. I, I really appreciate it. I mean, of what we've ranted about so far, where are you at with like, do you have a very specific cigar that you were like, dude, I aged this cigar and it totally changed and I was hooked for good. So I'm sure you guys have, have come across this type of thing of you find all types of different information on the internet, whether it's what do I keep yeah. my humidity at with my humidor? Uh, should I leave cellophane on? Should I take it off? There's, there's the endless debates on the internet. So what I can speak on is, my own experience and speaking with people that I really trust in the industry, kind of getting their feedback of where I um, have drawn a lot of like information or base what I like to age or not age, that sort of thing. Um, when I first noticed a cigar that I absolutely loved, and I'm sure we've all heard of it before, is the My Father 1922 Le Bijou. And that um, it's a very dark, medium plus strength, um, full flavored cigar. And I remember the first time I smoked it was the year that uh, Cigar Aficionado had given it its Cigar of the Year. Uh, and then when that happened, I went into a shop and I was like, oh, yeah, I've heard of this before. And the person was like, you have to try it. And I was like, all right, I'll give it a try. Well, I smoked about half of it. And it, I was sitting with my wife and I was like, you know, I have to get a box of these. Um, and that was back. I want to say it got its rating in 2015, I believe. So I bought it back in late 2015. I still have two cigars from that that box. Um, wow. But I... I revisited it in 2019. It was four years of age and it just blew my mind. And something you had mentioned uh, earlier about like the rough edges, what I've, what I found about certain cigars is that sometimes, I mean, for me, I enjoy a full to a medium plus to fuller strength cigar, lots of body, lots of flavor. But if you retrohale those cigars, you, you definitely feel it in your nose. You get a oh, little yeah. teary eyed. We were joking yesterday on our live uh, with the membership that it's like, you know, you start bleeding from your ears because it's so aggressive. Um, but you have notes like pepper. You have notes like cocoa. You have like cedar earth. And what aging did to that cigar is it brings those notes together and it marries those tobaccos. Because when you when you roll a cigar and you have you have regions of tobacco from Condega and Esteli Jalapa and blenders will tell you, okay, well, this is what adds this to that and that sort of thing. When they're sitting together, these tobaccos marry together over a length of time. And so I found a lot of that, like what I would say, like, oh, there was an aggressive cocoa and there was a spice. Turns out to be more of this like 
lingering pleasant spice. The retro calms down, but then you have this pleasant sweetness that is throughout the entire cigar. It just it tastes more mature. It tastes more uh, refined uh, and less like aggressive on those sharper ends. And that was that was one of the first experiences I had with it aging a cigar for four years. Um, and I absolutely fell in love with it. Yeah. That's I always awesome. think it's like uh, making a pot of chili. If you can make it the night before, let it cool, put it in the oh, refrigerator, yeah. and then reheat it the next day, Yes, game changer. Like the whole mm-hmm. thing is next level better because everything nice. has had a chance to come together. It just tastes far more cohesive. The spice is more balanced. The, the tomato, the chili peppers, whatever it is that's in your chili, depending on where you live. And, you know, anything, stews, um, anything that has a lot of flavor that needs to marry, when you give it a little bit of time, it allows those things that might get lost in the background to now come to the forefront because you're not getting blasted by, one, temperature, Mm -hmm. and two, um, you know, the most assertive notes. So like that um, Le Bijou, Mm -hmm. I remember smoking that the first time when it came out and was like, this is one of the strongest cigars I've smoked. And I smoked even then (laughs) a lot of cigars. Yeah, yeah. And so I kind of held off on that cigar for a while. And then I had one that had maybe two or three years of age on it. Okay. And it's a beautiful cigar. Like you get far more of those chocolate notes. You get that Mm. just overall richness. But you hit it right on the head. Uh, The retrohale on some of those really peppery cigars, especially the My Father's, the Tatuajes, those cigars tend to kind of feature that. It's a far more pleasant, balanced spice on the retrohale. It still tingles. Yeah, but it's not the eye watering like, oh, good Lord, <laughs> I'm gonna maybe do this like two more times in this cigar. But I'm like, I feel like I have gotten pretty good at this in the last few years, but it's sometimes quite assertive. Yeah, well, and 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 part of the the membership and part of kind of I mean, I'm in the same boat before before a uh, cigar retailer. I'm a c- cigar consumer and I have right. uh, what I know what I really enjoy as far as my palate uh, and that sort of thing. So it's an experimentation and it's not an exact science. So I can't say, you know, this is what happens. Uh, You can count on X, Y, Z every single time. It's part of the journey. I mean, it's part of trying new things. And I mean, you, you find certain cigars you like, but then it shouldn't stop there. You try new things and okay, I do like this. I don't like that. Um, And so I've had some negative responses to cigars. I I don't necessarily want to mention them. Uh, because our yeah. there are certain brands we all know and love. Um, but there's just certain tobaccos that, you know, if it's more medium and you're like, I like this, it's not too aggressive. I'm going to see what happens after you age it. Sometimes it can just turn really, really mellow and the flavor is something you're searching for. So sure. right. that's part of that kind of like journey. Well, and I think that's the, that's the trial and error, the slight, you know, failures or, oh, this one wasn't maybe worth setting down. I should have just had it when it was fresh. Um, You know, beer, of course, is a very easy example or parallel to aging. You're Mm -hmm. never going to age a hop forward beer because all those volatile oils are just going to turn super nasty. You're going to lose all that flavor. It's meant to be consumed right away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Something with higher alcohol, like a barley wine, that stuff can sit for years and years and just gets better and better and softer and softer. And I remember uh, at one of the restaurants uh, in the Sahara in Las Vegas, Mm -hmm. Uh, the sommelier, we were having just an absolute blast, uh, with this gentleman, his name is Lou. And he brought out, he asked if we wanted some dessert wines or to look at the menu. And I said, I'd be totally game to try whatever you'd want to bring. And so he brought out a Madeira and then this port and the Madeira was from, I think 1980. And he said the cool thing about Madeira and why it was so prevalent for so many centuries is he goes, I could take a glass of this, set it literally over the live fire that we're cooking our steaks on, leave it for the entire service, take it off, let it cool, and it Mm -hmm. would taste exactly the same as if I poured it straight from the bottle. How do they do that? Because it's so stable (laughs) um, and it's slightly oxidized, so it it doesn't lose anything. The heating it up and cooling it down doesn't do anything. And I'm like, now that's kind of fascinating to me. That's so weird. But it happens that way with cigars. There are some that they taste smooth and balanced and as they're intended right out of the gate and you age mm-hmm. them and they taste the same. Now here's, here's something really interesting is that we, the first cigar we ever launched on the membership uh, was the Grimalkin from uh, house of Emilio. Uh, and if you guys aren't familiar with the brand, I mean, I absolutely love this company. It's called Oveja Negra brands. It's like yep. an umbrella company. And underneath oh. you have uh, black label trading, 
Blackworks Studio, you have uh, Dissident, and then House of Emilio. Yep. And uh, the Grimalkin's already more of a medium, quintessential, like Nicaraguan flavor. Uh, we were getting notes of like floral, cedar, rose petal, a lot of these different things. Not very strong. Very easy retro hill. So then a year goes by from the membership, and I tell all my members, we're smoking two cigars tonight. We're going to smoke first the one we uh, released a year ago so we can see what has changed, and then we're smoking the new one we're releasing. We found that after a year, surprisingly, that Grimalkin was stepped up a notch in strength. Really? Weird. Very weird. And it was a bit more punchy, um, and it was just like that type of thing. It's like I can't give you the scientific – like criteria right. of why that happened but it's these particular tobaccos marrying together and they always talk about uh I've, I've heard many times from many manufacturers that there's peak years you know you have like where the flavor goes up and then it tapers off and maybe yep. go down in yep. that one year stretch uh we notice a little bit more fla- a strength to it so really interesting, interesting. that's wow. so crazy flip up uh trevor's trevor bain's comment here real quick before we get into that Trevor says, I would smoke a cigar off the bat, age the other two for a year, then the third cigar for another year, and write notes down in each time to see the difference. I mean, that's a great segue into like what you're trying to do yeah. with yeah, yeah. the society here. So let's just get into like what you're offering. So if we go back to that screen of what you offer, it's five cigars, all the same, for $42.99 shipped to you. That's, mm-hmm. That includes shipping, right? Uh, no shipping on top of that, just because uh, there is a variation depending on a, a where around the country you are. Shipping is normally around like seven dollars, so we yeah. normally keep it around like fifty bucks, uh, which is about ten bucks a stick um, of a five pack. Gotcha. Perfect. So- and I think Eric, that's right in the wheelhouse of you know the subscriptions and cigars that are affordable. Right. That's a you know kind of everyday stick. I think that's what I'm right. typically spending on cigars. So that's and- a great value. And you notice in the, the previous slide with Agonorsa uh, Anniversario, uh, Maduro, we actually released that like two weeks after PCA hit. So we got one of like yeah. the first releases on that. Uh, and that stick alone, like doesn't matter prior to any tax of state that you're in is about 13 to $14. So there's, there's oftentimes that you can get a pretty good value as well yeah. on more prestigious cigars like that. But this is a prime example of like this, this has aged tobacco in it, but the, the cigar itself doesn't have that same aging right. on it as well because there's two different things going on there. Gotcha. Okay. Well, it's just interesting too because you're saying, okay, so you get these cigars on the 22nd of each month and then on the first Thursday of the month, you guys smoke the cigar over Zoom. Mm-hmm. Is that correct? We, we that- smoke it over our YouTube channel, uh, YouTube Live, and actually, uh, we I mean, it's cataloged in our channel so you can kind of see what we, we do. We have people, our members that are not in California with us they, they hop on, drop in the comments, or sometimes we'll send them to the link so that they can jump on on video. And then all of our members in the shop, they sit around the lounge while we're experiencing it, and they rotate throughout. So it's me talking to one of our members and bouncing ideas off each other. What are you tasting? What are you pairing with? What have you noticed about it? That sort of thing. Right. Perfect. And you get a couple things with the order. One, the, the first time you order, you get a Boveda humidor bag, a large one. So all the cigars you get for that year, you can start aging them. The other thing you get are blank labels that are pre-adhesive, which is awesome because I can just pull this off and I can literally stick it on the cigar and say, okay, don't smoke this until March of 2023 Mm -hmm. because that's the six month mark. Mm -hmm. And then I know like, yep, I love that. It's super cool. That makes it easy for me. Um, The one area too that you also send out is, if you go to that other link, Matt, that opportunity to rate the cigar. Uh, I went through this the other day. I'm not really good at rating cigars. I don't see um, a ton of benefit if you scroll down, Matt, in numbers. Um, so if you okay. scroll down, you can see like cold draw right there. It says like it's a number base. I would much prefer like being able to say like what flavors did I taste? Because I think ultimately that's what I'm going to be focused on when I okay. age the cigars. Like, yep. okay what flavors you know like you guys like whoa the right. strength went up 
and uh, f- flavors change. That's what I want to see because I don't remember. Yeah. I have a hard enough time. And I'm I half think- the time I'm writing down Nate's notes. I'm like, oh, hey, <laughs> no, he's got this. Uh, well, yeah, me too. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, what do you and I think I like, you know, if we had a, you know, let's say a score at the end of each because there are categories. Um, Matt, if you can scroll down, I think we start with go up a little bit. You have construction is your first category. Cold draw, mm-hmm. the ash, the burn, the draw. And then it goes to flavor. Uh, you know, aroma, the nose, first, second, third, third, uh, label presentation. I think it'd be cool to have a number for the, each of those categories and then spots where I could, what I would like is like Rob said, to put in what gotcha. I actually think I'm tasting and then I can do a total score. Right. And then so very, that. very similar to how, like at the bottom, we have notes where you, you where that's where you put down the flavors that you tasted, the experience you had, but almost yep. for every category that is. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Cause yep. it's like half wheel, right? It's like, he's right. like, you know, I, I taste apricot on the cold draw, but not right. during the smoke. And I was yep. like, Oh, what the heck? Yep. How do you do that? So one, it helps me build my tasting ability if I'm going to geek out about it. Yeah. And then two, it also recorded I- archive of, okay. I don't remember what I said about that. Let me review. And then when I go to smoke it again, mm-hmm. notice the change. Right. That's right. what I'd be most Almost like in. keeping a, you know, a, a digitized Rolodex of, right. you know, your little cigar journal. So now you can it. do, yeah, you could do a cigar journal. Sure. Oh, like that's just paper, you mm-hmm. know, that's fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. But cool if you can bring it to me in digital and then I can always go back into basically sure. that library and find it. So, but Overall, I mean, no other subscription that I know of is giving you the ability to age, see what aging does, and then yeah. hosting live events to talk about it. Right. Community. Right. So I really well, and, like and from from the beginning, our shop and our membership has always been r- really deeply rooted in uh, two pillars uh, as our foundation. That's education and community. Um, and so that kind of that that membership encompasses that because we're learning together. I mean, we're, we're always uh, like some of our taglines, of course, is like cigars that deserve to be smoked. Um, and, and it's it's one of those things we're, we're dealing with more on the boutique craft side of cigars. So a lot of them are exclusives for our shop, um, exclusive blends that have been we worked with other blenders with. Um, but then also that learning experience of how does this age? Does it do better after one year, two years, six months? Um, as well as a community aspect of, of being online and smoking it together. And, and I mean, there's, there's when, when, when these hit the mail uh, and we've got people out in North Carolina, in, uh, in uh, Midwestern states, and they start posting about it and giving the feedback, that's what's really, really rewarding to me is to saying like, okay, hey, this is what I'm getting off the flavor. This is what I think it's high marks are uh, because that's what it's about. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then Eric, with those YouTube lives, will there be a, a kind of a conscious effort to, uh, as a community, go back and smoke a particular cigar at six months at that year benchmark? Um, or will it be constantly more focused on kind of the new one that's out that month? Uh, how will that kind of play out? So what we normally do is at the end of the year, uh, we go through um, each cigar that we had for that year. So we, we re- revisit uh, like visually like, hey, this is what we released this time. This is what we remember about it, that sort of thing. And then we also smoke uh, the cigar that we released one year ago. So just oh, that okay. it's like a good benchmark to be like, OK, this is how it's sure. changed. Um, something that was really interesting we did through the society. So there's a company that we um, work really well with um, called Stallone Cigars. Tony Barrios is the blender and owner. Uh, and we we got a. Uh, one pack from him that didn't necessarily this pack wasn't focused on hey age this longer this was basically the work has been done for you and now notice the difference because what it was was is it before he launched his brand stallone he had he has his uh, brand called the cowboy series six different blends and before he launched it in 2013 he made custom vitolas they were a five and three eighths by 53 Parejo, so they're all round. They're not box press, and most of the Cowboy series now are box press. He rolled them uh, and made them in these sort of like five count coffins, okay. and they had been sitting in his aging vault for seven years. And so he told me about this, and I was like, "This is this is perfect because this is a one exception to what we're mailing out. This is the aged product in our hands already for seven years. So we got our hands on those. We sent it out to our members, and if you smoke that seven year aged Salone." And then you smoke it right next to it's one that's freshly on the shelf. The yep. difference is insane. 
it's, wow. it's really that was kind of like almost like stepping into the future this is this is an example of what it looks like with seven years age on it so that's amazing so you really, could actually do this like i mean that's why the cards are blank you could do one year two year three year four mm -hmm. year right you just pick whatever maybe you want to do one year yeah three year five right. year yeah seven year i mean i don't know i mean if you're saying that a seven year age cigar was totally different than the the current production i mean that's uh, that's crazy well yeah. like Bob, your you know your little two inch cigar that you were finishing when we started this yeah uh, unboxed was a opus x 20 year yeah i i generally prefer any opus x with at least three years of age on it sure okay. from the you know from the point it arrived in the shop sure i think it softens a lot of the not harsh harsh isn't the right word but a lot of those stronger more assertive more aggressive yeah. yeah aggressive is a great word uh and i really enjoy them uh right out of the box i don't tend to pick uh, really? opus up you know especially in the the fuente line i i head straight for casa cuba that's my okay. that's my okay. go-to fuente um but the aged ones are always really really enjoyable yeah no definitely and and again, I mean, it's sometimes it's hit or miss. Um, my honest worry, though, when I talked to Tony about that, I was like, seven years, that's a lot. That's a lot of age. Right. And I was like, I, I hopefully we're, we're not just tasting paper. But <laughs> I think the testament to like a good cigar maker using high priming tobacco, really flavorful tobacco, like his Zeno Broadleaf in his core line, his Cowboy Series, is it's, I mean, it's one of the strongest Broadleafs I smoke. I really enjoy yeah. it. But it's not for the faint of heart. The sure. aged broadleaf was more like chocolatey. I'm like the pepper after the first like third really like dies off to be more of a complimentary note, not a forward note. So you find those like nuances that is more approachable to where I could even say, hey, you like medium to medium plus try this aged Stallone. It's a lot less in your face than something that's going to be on the stronger side. Oh, Crazy. that's a cool side by side. I like that. Uh that's what excites me. It's like, you know, what are you getting excited about? I don't really get excited about just getting cigars in the mail. I get excited about the experience. Mm -hmm. like, what mm -hmm. am I going to do with this? You know, and I think <laughs> that's why like standard and Twain is so interesting. It's like, Oh, it's unbanded. What is it? Oh, I got to play the guessing game. Yes. Yeah. And in this case, it's like, Oh man, I get, I get to try this cigar and then I get to see what happens after however long I want to age it for. And yeah, we, we don't tend in our culture much anymore. We don't tend to force ourselves to wait mm. for much of anything anymore. Mm -hmm. Everything is immediate. Everything is right now. If you want it, you can generally find it and get it and have it. Right. Right. So to force yourself to sit on something and just be patient and wait adds this great layer of anticipation, whether it's going to be better or not. That's not the important part. <laughs> right. Right. Of what's this going to do? What do I think it's going to do? And then you smoke it and go, Oh yeah, maybe I got that part right. Oh, this is yeah. definitely different. I think right. that's very exciting. Yeah. So, so many members after like they get their initial pack, they're like, I'm going to try to like take these two and bury them at the very depths of my humidor. So I forget <laughs> about it and yeah. I'm not thinking about it. Um, because that, and, and really that initially way back when I was started, uh, when I got my first humidor, uh, that was strictly why I bought it. I was like, I didn't know you can age cigars. I didn't know you can make this better. And like, there's a lot of brands out there with a higher price tag for good reason, because they're excellent. But a lot of times it's like, okay, well, they've been aged two or three years so that they're ready to smoke right out the gate. You're not worrying about ammonia, tight draws, wet tobacco. Yeah. Um, and then I realized like, this is something you can do yourself. And that inherent value that you perceive in the flavor and the construction at burning all at the same rate is something that you can help a cigar along with yourself. Absolutely. And so it started with a, you know, a small hundred count Savoy desktop humidor that turned into two, that turned into a Coolador, that turned into a six foot cabinet because I'm like, <laughs> I want to age more yes. uh, and see what that's like. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Let's throw up uh, Tucker's question. Can you, um, excuse me. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Tucker says, can you explain the purpose and process of rotating cigars in a humidor while aging them? I guess the way I would, or the way I understand it is even in a small container, there is going to be airflow and there's still going to be airflow, even in a Tupperware, even though it's right. not exchanging air, because when you close that lid, you're holding air in there. And especially with Boveda, as temperature changes, as barometric pressure changes, that environment, even in that closed space, is going to move and swirl around because that pressure is going to change. And as the Boveda equalizes that to maintain the same level of humidity, 
that's going to move air around. Most of the uh, individuals I know that sit on a lot of cigars will go in uh, and even just as a practice of checking their Boba packs, we'll move cigars, take them out. Sometimes kind of, I guess it would be like a only way less uh, extreme, like a, a barrel house for bourbon. Mm-hmm. That temperature and that air uh, and that humidity moves around that barrel house very differently in the upper corners as it does to the middle, as it does to the bottom corners. And so if they rotate those barrels, they're getting sometimes, you know, the ones that are in the heart of that Rick house, kind of in the middle of the X, so to speak, sure. that's like the sweet spot because it gets kind of the best of everything. Okay. But there can be some really unique, interesting stuff at the top. And so by moving stuff around, you kind of give, even in that small space, a chance for the subtle variations to be more equalized from top to bottom and side to side. Sure. I yeah. maybe just do it to check, make sure I don't have any mold, make sure I don't have, uh, I think that's part of it know, too. Like yeah. dry over the packs and yep. I'm like, yep. that's it. And I, I would say I don't even check that much anymore because most of my stuff is in airtight. And then yeah. I don't know if it's and inhibiting the aging process or not. And I don't think it really is all that necessary to move the boxes around, especially in a relatively small to medium size vessel. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's just sort of, it happens by default when you're moving those boxes, you're like, oh, I'm going to put these over here. I'm going to read Jenga, you know, this right. configuration to make it fit in there or to get a little right. more air moving around the boxes. Mm-hmm. Because if you do have some space for that air to move around, even in a cooler or a Tupperware or Rubbermaid, you are going to get, I think, a little more efficient aging because that air does have a chance to swirl around those cigars. Um and, and I think, you know, every six months or even a year, you open up that lid, you allow some fresh new air to come in. Uh, that can help to do maybe some interesting things to your cigars. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and uh, yeah, I would agree with that. And I'd also agree with Rob uh, as far as mold check, because especially when you have tobacco sitting for, let's say, two years, um, that's always a factor. And that a lot mm-hmm. can depend on like the, the uh, climate that your humidor is sitting in the humidity um, question I get a lot about it kind of in that same vein is leave cellophane on, leave cellophane off or take it off. Um, and that is, that is like the, the internet debate of the century. Like you <laughs> will find so many different, what I will simply say is that I have found more positives of leaving the cellophane on than negatives. Um, yeah. And so what are your positives. So the positive uh, one is that let's say, let's say we're not even talking about aging at this point and you just have cigars in your humidor and you're like, Hey, I'm going to a friend's house. We're going to do whiskey night or whatever. You drop that cigar. If it's in cello, it's going to have a better chance of not cracking than if it's. Yeah. So protection. Yes. Yeah, protect for sure. A lot of people see cellophane and they think, Oh, it's plastic. Humidity can't make its way through, but cello is a membrane that breathes through. Yep. So you're, you're going to have that. That humidity in there. Base. Yep. Yeah. And then also when it, a very long time ago, prior to owning a shop or anything, uh, a very tumultuous moment uh, in us moving uh, from one house to the next, I wasn't really paying attention for about two or three months to my humidor. And I lost about five cigars to mold because I wasn't regulating wow. at all. And the only ones susceptible, they were sitting right next to each other, were ones without cello. It's an extra protection against mold, at least in the experiences that I've had. So for those reasons, I'm like, you know, some cigars are shipped without cello and there's their own reasons. Um, For example, something like Aladino Corojo Reserve is shipped in a solid Spanish cedar box. So they want that to breathe as much as quickly as possible so that when they ship it and it hits the shelf of the retailer, that it has more of that cedar aroma immediately. So there's definitely reasons behind it, but I I feel like for me personally, I leave cellophane on. I have found that I I prefer the result I get prior uh, in the uh, in difference. I did yeah. read an article in Cigar Press magazine about cello and uncelloed, and they did some aging on it. And I can't remember how long, but they definitely said, hey, if the cigar is more spicy in the cello, it's it retains that spicy flavor. If it's um, out of the cell, then it kind of mellows out. Yeah. So mm. I think if you're trying to achieve, like if you smoke this and you're like, whoa, that's a little like strong mm-hmm. or a little sharp in one note, psh, take the cellophane off. Sure. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. Easy. Let it go. Well, and Rob and I have done this. If we're trying to quick or humidify a cigar in a matter of a couple of days, take the cello off, cut the head of the cigar, 
drop them in the bag so you have moisture mm. going in top and bottom. Yeah. You, you will get a little boost of humidity more evenly in that cigar if you're going to, or you need to smoke it right it, within a couple of days or even a day. Mm -hmm. It's it's a better way to do that. So there there are some kind of tricks that you can do to jumpstart right. that. Right. Um, Rob, there's a good question there from Jacob yeah. R. To, uh, th throw up the other one real quick though, because he just. Uh, oh yeah, Jacob throw up Jacob's R. first. Yeah, the, his right first above one. That. I thought that was really cool. He's like, "Hey, I just stumbled upon this channel after lighting up an EP Creo pledge. This is awesome. Thank you. Welcome, Jacob. I appreciate you. And here's his question. So in his. Third comment, we don't need to put it up. He says he has a glass top humidor, but he says, what type of RH do you guys recommend for a high elevation, uh, 6,700 feet during the winter, about 10 to 20 degrees? Um, I'll tell you what I do. So I, it comes down to a lot of factors. It comes down to what percent you like your cigars to smoke at. Yep. Um, it comes down to what type of container you have. So you have a very leaky humidor with a glass top. Uh, and then where it is that you're going to be smoking that cigar once you take it out of that humidor, I think is really important in the winter. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I learned some interesting information, Eric, from uh, a shop cigar box out in Las Vegas, talking with mm -hmm. uh, Jason, the manager there. And he said that, especially in Vegas, where it's typically like 5% humidity, he said most people err on the side of going you know, 75% in their humidor to try to balance out and keep their cigars at 69%. And invariably what happens, they take that cigar, they go step outside to have that cigar, and the cigar blows up on them. He said yeah. because the difference in humidity from that humidor to the outside humidity is so great right. that the cigar can't compete with that. It just, all that moisture expands, it cracks the wrapper, and the cigar kind of blows up. So he always recommends going a little on the lower end, go 65 or even 62 because it's going to hold that in that hu humidor and the cigar can actually smoke a little better when it's a little bit drier than it does when it's a little bit wetter. And then your cigars yeah. have a much lower chance of blowing up. So what I do in my humidor is I would probably, because I like a cigar to smoke itself somewhere between 63 and 65%. Okay. I would probably in the winter time, um, because I have a Savoy, you know, all wood humidor and it holds pretty mm -hmm. well. I use 60% yeah. year round and my cigars hold about 63 to 65%. Okay. Um, I'm fortunate to have radiant boiler heat so it doesn't get super dry sure. in my house, but we have a ceiling fan that we keep on to recirculate that air. My cigars mm -hmm. stay pretty perfect all year long. I would, if it were my humidor and I had a glass top, I'd probably throw 72 in there because you're going to lose some mm -hmm. through that glass and it's going to hold about 63 to 65. Right. Now for those smokers that like a cigar closer to 70, 71%, you could certainly do 75%, but I think if you went anywhere that's going to be outside and really dry at that high elevation, you have a pretty good chance that cigar is going to crack. Mm -hmm. So I would tend to say air on the side of a little less humidity, like 72%, and you're probably going right. to end up with a really good cigar experience. Yeah. Right, right. Okay. And that's that's an interesting thing uh, with elevation. Uh, altitude really changes the flavor of a cigar. Absolutely. And and so if you're, yeah. you're pushing that 7,000, uh, that's also going to play a factor for sure. Yep. Right. Yep. Yep. I totally agree. It's like, I mean, you know, you try to boil water for pasta. My in-laws live mm -hmm. at about 9,000 feet and it just never gets there, you know? So you just have to drop the pasta or use a, you know, a, a thermometer and just see where it's at. And it just takes longer. So there are all sorts of things that get altered. Baking times, uh, ingredients are all different at higher elevation. Uh, there are some cookbooks that'll have, you know, standard like sea level <laughs> recipe, right? And right. High elevation recipe just oh, because wow. everything right. alters, you know, <laughs> stuff doesn't rise as much. All, all of those things. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Butane, you know, soft flames generally work pretty great at higher elevation, or you got to switch to like a high performance fuel or use mm -hmm. uh, a lighter that's got more kick to it to actually work at high altitude. Sure. Otherwise, you know, I've got a kind of one of my favorites is a DuPont lighter. And I went on a walk with the cigar at my uh, in-laws and I got the cigar lit and about halfway through, I barely got enough fuel to relight that cigar. And I was going to be so annoyed if I had to finish that walk without the cigar. <laughs> this lighter would not work <laughs> right, right. In, Colorado? in Colorado. Yeah. Yep. Well, interesting stuff. I totally, uh, Tucker even threw up another one where aging cigars, obviously, for long term, it's best to go at the low 60s. And I think that's also a great tip. Yeah. Uh, heard that a lot. Obviously, getting away from that mold threshold, which is right around right. 75%, right. you know, right there is typically and, and 
especially Cubans, can mold even lower at a lower threshold. So uh -huh. the yeah. 60s can sometimes be the mold threshold. So yeah, and cooler. It's like um, uh, you know, anyone that makes fermented foods, sauerkraut, uh, chili, you know, chili sauces, hot sauces, things like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, even breads, when they ferment like sourdoughs, some of the most interesting fermentations happen at cooler temperatures. So not at a hot temperature, but like even in the refrigerator, because it's still going to ferment. It just takes longer. And often you will get more subtle, nuanced, really unique flavors. And I think that's a big part of the aging cigars at a lower humidity and even a cooler yeah. temperature. It stalls that fermentation and allows it to happen at a lot slower rate so you can go for much longer if you do that at lower humidity because that cigar doesn't have as much moisture and you know temperature and heat and water that it's kind of cooking on yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah cool well ultimately eric i appreciate you jumping in on this friday and then obviously bringing us this subscription where we can actually age cigars and see what it does it'll be cool to see the uh the society grow and see all the different nuances that each cigar is going to bring us. Definitely. Definitely. No, I appreciate you guys having me on. Uh, and really, I mean, nerding out and talking about aging cigars, tobacco. Um, it's what I love to do, especially like when we do our live shows with people like Saka and, and uh, Nick Melillo and just really delving deep into it. Uh, I, I'm talking about it. It's, it's great. I love it. That's fantastic. Well, and we sure appreciate you, Eric, for being such a great supporter of Boveda. And we want to do as much as possible to help support you because uh, you just you've got a beautiful shop. I was fortunate enough to be able to come out and do a, a live video with you at your shop. Uh, uh, a beautiful apple orchard. So if anyone's ever in the neighborhood, make sure to go visit Eric's shop uh, uh, up at Oakland. It's a it's a beautiful place. So thanks again, Eric. Of course. Of course. Thank you guys so much. Thanks, everyone. Have a great weekend. Cheers, everybody.